In the final part of these tutorials on multi-layer keying in After Effects, I just want to introduce you to the idea of being able to create a shape, to create a mask or a mat, that is going to have a variable edge feather. Now you can't do this directly in After Effects unless you buy a plugin. There is a plugin available for it, I'm going to just quickly show you that. It's by Revision Effects and it's called PV Feather, which is per vertex feather, and as you can see from the little video that they have, that you can actually do individual vertex feathering which is actually very useful when you want to create very small feathers for some area very big feathers for other areas um, the pricing for that at the moment as you can see is $70 69.95 a great little plugin and very easy and quick to use but there is another way of doing it if you don't want to buy a plugin this is a great plugin if you do lots of masking work it would be great to have it directly the alternative is that we create our masks in Mocha because Mocha has a per vertex edge feathering option and then we bring the shape over into After Effects and I just want to quickly show you how to do that so I'm going to go back to my project panel I'm going to take this original layered comp and I'm going to drag it down to a new comp icon and I'm going to call it variable feather just so that we can see so select it and call it variable feather and you, we've obviously got the layered comp directly back inside there and we know that what we need to do is say draw a mask around the area that we've got a problem but rather than drawing the mask in After Effects I'm going to draw the mask and animate the mask in Mocha so I'm going to go over to Mocha Mocha for After Effects, this is CS5 and CS5.5 I think you need to have Mocha 2 so if I go about you'll see this is called this is Mocha 2 so you've got to have Mocha 2 because I don't believe that Mocha Shape is available for Mocha 1 and 1 1.5. So you do need Mocha 2 to do this and this is a really wonderful feature. And if you want to know how to load it in, you simply do this. You go to Create New Project. Let's don't save this one, I'll show you from scratch. And then you choose your footage. So mine's on my desktop. You just select the first image if it's an image sequence and it knows it's an image sequence. And you select Open and then it tells you everything about it you can see here that you've got frame ranges and the frame rate and the size and if these are wrong you can change them but I know they're okay the only thing that I do tend to really change a lot is I click here it says cache clip and you click cache clip and it caches it straight in easily to use click OK and it says it already exists that's fine so I can overwrite it yes and it's going to bring it in and it's going to cache the clip I'll pause the video here and come back once it's cached okay so that's coming in and that's now cached so if I hit my spacebar to play you'll see that the whole clip plays through okay so we're going to work on this clip in here and we can create our shape which is going to be our mask in After Effects in here and then we can have access to the per vertex feathering feature that comes with Mocha so how do we create our shape well simply we choose this X spline tool up here click the X spline and then just click around the area that you want to deal with now I'm going to click a few points just either side of her arm and I know that this is the one that I'm going to have most problems with just here where my core mat is an issue and then I want to go along the middle of the arm where my core mat will fill in the transparency and then I think I'm okay here and to finish you either right click or go back to the first point and now we've created a shape and it's called layer 1 and I always recommend you rename it I'm just going to call this arm mask for want of a better phrase hit return so that's called arm mask and I'm not going to track this so I don't need to do tracking if you want to track it you can do it tracking and you can do all of that but we don't need to be too precise with this we can actually do it with just keyframes which I'll show you in a minute okay so now that I've actually created the mask how do I get into the per vertex feathering firstly I'm going to zoom in so hold the Z key down and then push forward on your mouse and it zooms in then hold the key right next to it, the X key down, you get the hand tool and you can pull down and see it a lot clearer okay so now we can clearly see the shape we're working on in fact I'm just going to pull it down slightly more now look up here and you'll see that we've got some tools, we've got both 
move the inner and outer edges, we can move an inner edge with this one, or we can move an outer or an external point with this one. And I'm going to choose to move my external edge points. And when I pull them out, I'm actually creating a feather. And the further I pull them, the, the, the bigger the feather's going to be. I don't need a huge feather actually in here anyway. I just need a little bit of a feather. But when it comes to this edge here, I don't really want much of a feather at all. Because this is where the semi transparency problem is going to be. But up here I can have as big a feather as I like. And again, I don't want a huge feather here because this is again where my problem is going to be. But I can have as big a feather as I like all the way along here. And if I think I need to add extra points, you've got this little button here that says add extra points or point insertion tool. Click and you can add an extra point. And again, you can go back to your arrow tool then and you can feather those accordingly and get the right sort of results that you want. That's now created feathering all the way around the edge with minimal feathering here and here where we know we're going to have issues and big feathering elsewhere where we know that it's not such an issue for us because our core mat will fill in the gaps. Okay, so we've created that. Now we need to animate it. And to animate it, it's a simple... I'm going to just zoom out very slightly so we can see all of our points. So it's as simple as taking your current time indicator and moving it along and then making sure you select this one here which is both keys so they're both moved together select that's why it's got a little b select that so you can move them all together and draw a marquee around them all and then you can select any one point to get back to where you were before i'm not going to do many of these i'll just do a couple for example move it here and again i need to select one point and if these points are in the wrong place i just click to select away and i can now pull these ones and pull them across so that we've got the right sort of result all the way through. And you can do that with any one point, you can just move it as necessary. And you go all the way through your composition, and then you will have an animated mask, or an animated shape in fact, that we can use in After Effects. So how do I get it to After Effects? What I do is I simply go down here at the bottom where it says Export Shape Data. Click on Export Shape Data, it only gives me one option, as you can see. Mocha Shape Data for AE, for After Effects. Then what you want to do is not save it, but copy it to the clipboard. So you copy to clipboard, go back to After Effects, select the layer that you want it to be on, and make sure your current time indicator is at the beginning, and then do Edit, Paste. And there it is. And if you zoom in a bit, you'll see we've actually got our variable feather. So a very thin feather here and here, but a much broader feather along here. So we have actually achieved what we wanted to achieve. Obviously there are a few more steps that we need to take. So let's just quickly run through those so that I can show you how to do them. So I'm just going to click fit actually at this point. Okay, so those steps that we need to take. We need to duplicate this layer. So layer comp duplicate it. Well, incidentally, I want to point out it is actually animated. As we animated it, you'll see that it actually moves across. So all the animation has come across as well. Anyway, so we know it's animated, so let's duplicate our layer. So layer comp, let's rename it first of all. Let's call this our arm line. And duplicate it, so com control or command D. And bring arm line 2 down to the bottom and rename this one as our base mat. Which is going to have everything else to it. Um, now, it's got all the same effects, but obviously all we can now see is the one. And we need to be able to see everything else for this bottom layer except this area. So what I can do is select the layer, go to its effects controls, and you'll see that I've got the arm mask here, and it says blend mode. At the moment it says multiply, but if I take it to subtract, you'll see that I've got everything else, except of course we've now got our fantastic problem with transparency in the middle of her arm. But if I zoom in, you'll see that we've got much, much smaller areas where there could be potential problems and maintain a good feather everywhere else. Okay, so how do we get rid of that? Well, we take our base layer, duplicate it, Control or Command D, take it to the bottom, rename that one as our core mat, and then delete any effects on here. So I've selected that layer, here's the effect, take that effect and hit delete. And then it's got rid of the problems. It's now the core mat. But now we need to go back, as we did last time, and apply key light to all three layers and shrink the core mat. So let's just do that very briefly. Select the arm layer, go Effect, Key Light 1.2, select that, and let's do our bits and pieces. So we know we need to select just near the arm, 
and we know that the screen mat settings were 8 and 84, 8 and 84, and that's done that one. Now we need to copy this to the other two layers. So take key light, select it, control command C, highlight the bottom two layers, and control command V to paste it, and then we've got everything ready to go. We select the core mat at the bottom, we open up our screen mat and we can shrink its edge and I'm just going to solo it so we can see that and I'm going to take the screen shrink row and I'm just going to take it back two at the most in fact 1.5 because we know it's less than that so I've shrunk the edges of the whole thing slightly I'm going to unsolo that so we've now got the proper edges that we had select the layer with the problem which is the line and again go in and I'm going to solo it just to show you it's just this bit here and I'm going to pull this back. I think minus 0.7 did it, minus 0.7. And uh, let's zoom in so you can see it a bit better when I do this. So minus 0.7, take that back to zero and you can see it's at zero. Minus 0.7. And then I might just want to pull out the screen softness a little bit, maybe the same sort of amount, just to give me a nice soft edge where there was previously a hard edge. If I unsolo that, you'll see that it's all there looking brilliant. Okay, so that's how you can deal with a specific line edge at one specific point, how you can use Mocha Shake to get a variable edge feather, and if we go into the area, and let's just solo it so we know exactly where we were looking, so we're looking just here, if we turn off the solo, what's it like? Well, you can hardly see a thing. Yes, there might be a slight issue, but it's tiny, because we use the variable edge feather from Mocha which is a fantastic option from Mocha Shape to solve this problem. So that's how we can deal with our line issues on our multi-layer mats and create something that looks quite stunning when we've finished. I hope you found these tutorials useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.